So hi, so welcome to our Parkway Tunnel. Uh, the Parkway Tunnel is part of the West Extension of the Confederation Line. The contractor taking on these works is a joint venture of Hewitt, Erovia and Vinci, known as East-West Connectors. This Parkway Tunnel runs in the east from Kitchissippi Station to the west Lincoln Field Station. It's three kilometers in length. It runs underneath the uh, parkway, so the Kitchissippi and McCann Parkway, previously known as Sir John A. McDonald Parkway, as well as sections of Richmond Road and Byron Linear Park. So it's in a very important, critical um, location within our, our nation's capital. Uh, within the parkway tunnel, there are two open air stations. There's Sherborne Station, as well as a New Orchard Station. Okay, so thanks again guys, we're very excited to show you these views inside this sneak peek of the underground tunnel that we've been working on for some time. So here are a few important aspects of the project to talk about. What we saw in our walkthrough was the start of the track works. So it's a very interesting, unique time to be here in the tunnel. There's sections of the tunnel that are complete, uh, sections where it's not complete, so you can see it in progress, and sections where track work has just started. So what the track work system looks like here, it's called direct fixation. We have the concrete slab or our floor. In that floor, we build these plinths. So plinths, imagine as concrete pencils that are really gonna support the rail. So there's one set of pencils for each rail. The track, each train has two rails. Um, and so the status that we're doing now is we're building out the rebar. So the rebar is first doweled in to the existing slab. We build out the rest of the rebar, we form, um, and we pour that. After that, that will be followed by anchors, fasteners, and the rail. So it's really a, a, a direct, rigid uh, system that uh, supports the rail along the, the full length of the tunnel. Uh, another really important and fascinating uh, aspect of how we've got here today is to complete the, the concrete structure that we see today. Our contractor has used uh, a very innovative technique known as the Everest Traveler system. So this is a custom um, hydraulic system. Think of it as a mobile um, formwork system that rolls into place. And with this, we're able to pour both, sorry, all three walls. As you see here, we have one corridor for the eastbound train, one corridor for the westbound train. We have two exterior walls, one center wall. This Everest formwork system allows us to pour those three walls and the roof all in one go. So Parkway Tunnel is on the critical path for the project. Schedule is, uh, you know, critically important. And so the schedule savings measure was very interesting, very important. And at, at the peak, we had actually three of these traveler systems being used, uh, one of which could accommodate curves. As you see on our walk, we're going to be going through a curved section of the tunnel. So this is really a very uh, important uh, and unique aspect of our project we wanted to touch on today. So here is a very interesting spot in the tunnel because of the progress it works. So we walk through a completed section where you feel like you're really in a closed in, completed tunnel. Here the section is ongoing. As was pointed out earlier, we could not use that traveler system that allowed the walls and the roof to be poured all at once in this area. That's because of a change in configuration of the tunnel. So the traveler system obviously works when you have a consistent shape, a consistent size and, and, uh, and section. 
here that section changed and so it's done in the, the conventional form which is slower uh, that involves pouring uh, any number of walls at a time either one or two stripping down that formwork then rebuilding your formwork and false work to support your roof Pour, uh, placing your rebar for your roof, pouring your roof and stripping there. So it's it's more steps, but it's it's required at sections of the tunnel where it's not a uniform, consistent shape. Uh, here what you can see as well, if you look up to the top on this side, is uh, the waterproofing that's up along the uh, supportive excavation there. Uh, you can also see the supportive excavation, which changes from one system here that's slurry wall to another system beyond that's piles and lagging. So it's just a really interesting spot. As we get up to the top of that little walkway, you'll be able to see above us that this closed tunnel has also been backfilled. So there's a section there where you see backfill. Uh, so again, this is a very good, interesting transition where you can see the different steps of work that you don't really get to appreciate in a finished section. Uh, what else can we mention? The depth of tunnel in this area varies, but it goes down to up to 10 meters. So that's just an interesting stat. Uh, something to mention as well as we are walking along, what we see mounted on that center wall is the dry fire line system. So that is for in case of fire, uh, that's where the water would be released from. The valves and everything haven't been installed because we're trying to keep as much open area for access for equipment as we continue to build the tunnel. So we are right on top of Sherborne Station. On this side is where we'll have the, the single entrance to the station. There's a staircase as well as an elevator. Um, we have some you know, really interesting, important connectivity features that come in the area. Along Richmond, there's gonna be a multi-use pathway. Along Byron, there's gonna be some drop-off pickup spots. Uh, along the center here is where there's gonna be the platform. So people are gonna go down the central platform. So as with any construction project, there's always unforeseens, right, unknowns. Um, main uh, items that we had to navigate, uh, obviously with our constructors in this area, would be site conditions, you know, rock quality, uh, soil conditions. Um, and then um, over the past few years, there's been, you know, COVID that we've had to navigate. There's been, uh, as a result of COVID, some uh, workforce shortages. And so that's another sort of complexity that has added to the, uh, the last few years of this project. Absolutely. So a big difference between the stage one and stage two on the city side, on the sort of construction management side, is actually the entire team that I have. So there was no dedicated construction management team in stage one. Uh, with uh, So in this case, we have our own dedicated field coordinators. We're in the field um, having a look, making sure that there's no quality corners being cut, making sure that we get ahead of issues, we coordinate if there's any permits needed or if there's anything the city can do to help and move progress and project forward. Um, Another uh, big uh, maybe point I would say that we've made a priority is the, the waterproofing, which you've touched on. So we made sure that it's a very solid system we have here, and there's a very robust quality system associated with both the products themselves and the implementation and sign off before the next step, the concrete pours into So the tunnel is on the critical path that is helping determine when we finish this uh, section of the project. Uh, that said, we had a very challenging few years um, with COVID and other factors playing into it. Um, but again, we're very, very truly proud of the work we have behind us, the quality we have behind us, and we're confident that it's going to be both safe and reliable when it's ready.
So as for uh, major milestones in the tunnel that we're tracking, the first one will be the completion of the concrete structure. Uh, we are currently at 85% completion and tracking to complete by summer of this year. Uh, next major milestone will be track completion. So as you saw today, we've done some uh, beginning of the plinth work. The rail work itself, the track work itself should be done by spring of next year. Uh, and then another major milestone will be the uh, catenary work, the OCS works. Those are scheduled to be done by late next year, late 2025. And then the hope would be we can start train testing in early 2026.